Welcome to Faith Hour, a service offered by Faith Church International, a Seventh-day Adventist church in Brooklyn Park, Minnesota, with Pastor Brian Mungundi as pastor. Faith Church International is committed to the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ to make the gospel meaningful and relevant to your daily experience as you work, love, and live. The gospel of Jesus Christ is about God's love, giving us a second chance, and hope in life. We urge you to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Allow Him to be Lord, and you will find new meaning in life. Faith Hour hopes that today's program will help make your days a little bright. God bless you all. Here we find Jesus traveling from Dalmanatha to Caesarea Philippi. And as he travels, he begins to chasten his disciples because of their inability to discern spiritual things. He says, you have ears, but you cannot hear. And even though you have eyes, yet you cannot see. And here Jesus conveys the message that blindness is not just a malfunction of the eyes, but blindness is the inability to see God at work in your life. And, and so it happens that as they enter into the city of Bethsaida, they bring to him a man who is blind. And the Bible says they besought him to touch him. And as I surveyed this story, I noticed some interesting dynamics at work. One being the power of intercession. Yeah. Notice now that the man makes no request of Jesus, neither does he offer any petition on his own behalf. Right. I find that interesting, church, because if I had a major illness or infirmity and you were able to get me in to see Jesus, you would have to say nothing for me. Yeah. In fact, I'd be so busy telling Jesus about my problem and the source of my problem, you wouldn't be able to get in a good word. But the good news for that man and for most of us sitting here tonight is that when we didn't have the good sense to be talking to Jesus for ourselves, yeah. there was somebody talking to Jesus on our behalf. In fact, the only reason some of us are alive tonight is because of the prayers of some mother or father, grandmother or auntie who is in a prayer meeting, in a prayer closet, in an upper room calling your name before the Lord. I know you thought your life was just charmed or maybe you got lucky, but if the saints would have stopped praying, then you would have started dying. Come on and say amen tonight. Is there anybody mindful that the only reason certain things that were supposed to happen to you didn't happen to you was because somebody was praying for you? Is there anybody mindful that when they start shooting at the club, there was a bullet with your name on it, but somebody was praying for you? Remember the bad car accident you got in. You walked away without a scratch because somebody was praying. sin. We don't want folks to know that our childs are chucking with 
school. We don't want people to know when there are problems in the home, when the fact is that we all struggle with sin and every marriage is under attack and all of our children are struggling to make it through. Are you hearing the word of God tonight? But understand that when you don't tell people the problem, it affects the way that they pray for you. So that if you give a generic prayer request, then you're going to get a generic prayer. And even though you can't tell everything to everybody, I believe the one place we ought to be able to take off the mask and remove the facade and put away the pretense is when we come into the house of the living God that the redeemed say so on tonight. You see, I'm a little different on this thing because see, one of the things God has done is he's delivered me from worrying about what people have to say about me. So that if the doctor tells me I might have cancer, I'm going to tell you it might be cancer so you know how you need to be praying. If my wife is about to leave me, I want you to pray for the spirit of reconciliation in my home. If I struggle with cigarettes or alcohol, I want you to pray for the spirit of deliverance in my life. And I'm not going to care what anybody thinks because we all sin and fallen short of the glory of God. The Bible says in James 5, 16, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another and you shall be healed. How many of us are mindful tonight that when the church comes together to pray, strongholds get broken? When the church prays, demons have to come out. When the church prays, our children come back to church. When the church prays, our marriages get made whole. When the church prays, the impossible becomes possible. When the church prays, God does exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or think when the church comes together to pray. <laughs> Verse number 23, when you have it, say amen. Mark chapter 8, verse number 23. The Bible says that he cometh to Bethsaida, and they bring a blind man unto him. And the Bible says that they besought him to touch him. And the Bible says, and he took the blind man by the hand, and he led him outside of the town. So now the man's friends have brought him to Jesus, and they've done all the talking on this man's behalf. But before Jesus heals the man, he decides to take the man on a journey outside of the city of Bethsaida. And so now this blind man is no longer to be led around by his friends. But Jesus now takes this blind man who's such a nobody that the Bible doesn't even give him a name. But Jesus grabs this man by the hand and he begins to lead this man on a journey. Now understand that when Jesus takes the man by the hand, this is a powerful moment. Because when he takes the man by the hand, he begins the process of stretching this man's faith that he might receive healing from God. You see, how does this stretch the man's faith? You see, understand this blind man has gotten comfortable being led around by his friends. He's developed a certain comfortable level with those who have handled him. He has developed a certain dependence upon those that have led him through unfamiliar terrain. But in order for this man to be healed, he's got to let go of the hands of his friends and he's got to reach out into the darkness and grab a hold of the hands of Jesus Christ. And understand that when he lets go of his friends and he grabs a hold of Jesus, there is a shifting of his faith. There is a transfer of his trust where he is no longer leading on the arms of flesh, but now he's leading on the everlasting arms of Jesus Christ. Do you understand, beloved, that in the perfection of our character, there's got to be a transfer of our faith. There's got to be a shifting of our trust to where we are no longer dependent upon the arms of flesh, but like this man, we learn how to lean on the everlasting arms of Jesus. Is there a witness in this room tonight? And see, that's why in faith development, you've got to be disappointed by people down here. Come on and say amen. You've got to be betrayed by family members. You've got to be turned on by friends. You've got to be disappointed by church members and disappointed by politicians and even disappointed by preachers so that you might come to know that man is but a vapor. He is here today and gone tomorrow. He'll love you when you're on top and despise you when you fall. Four corners of the earth, and they've been told to withhold the winds of strife until the people. 
her. She said, Pastor, that was another good message, but she said you sweat too much. <laughs>
have to raise up the standard and the expectation right. as believers. Do you realize what God has said about the church? God has said that you are the apple of my eye and the object of my supreme affection. For the people of God, we are to be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. That Jehovah might say is higher than the highest human thought can conceive. It's God's ideal for his children. Ephesians 3.20 says that God will do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask or think. So take your greatest dream, your highest ambition, multiply it times 10,000, and it will still fall short of God's design. If you can imagine it, you think it too small because faith exceeds our greatest expectation and imagination. Are you hearing me on time? Yes, sir. So the Bible says that Jesus begins to take the man on the journey yeah. outside of the city of Bethsaida. Now understand that in order for this man to be healed, there are a few things he's got to do. First thing he's got to do is he's got to be willing to take the journey. Second thing he's got to do is he's got to be willing to follow direction. <laughs> I'm going to play that here in Missouri, in Kansas, and all those places. We used to play a little game called Simon Says. Anybody ever heard of that game? Oh. And what Simon Says is, is it tests your ability to be able to follow directions. So the leader of the game will give you a directive, and he will precede it by saying, Simon Says. But if he gave you a directive without saying, Simon Says, then you would be disqualified from the game. So if Simon said jump up and down, you had to jump up and down. If, if Simon said walk left, then you had to walk left. If Simon said walk right, then you had to walk right. But if he gave you a directive without saying Simon says, then you would be put out of the game. Well, I believe we ought to change the game as believers and call it Jesus says. Come on, say it.
this thing trying to figure out what the spit represents. Why spit? Why spit? Church International is a Seventh-day Adventist church in Brooklyn Park, Minnesota, and it's part of Central States Conference. When you come to Faith Church International and you participate in our worship service, you will experience good messages relevant to the human needs, good music, you will have good time and good fun. We gather together for worship every Saturday. God is doing an incredible thing in this church. Church members are going to work, to school, in the community, fulfilling God's mission. The power of God is actively working in our midst. As a church, we continue to believe that fellowship with the Holy Spirit empowers our church members and they are released into the community to do spontaneous evangelism. My dear friend, if you are looking for a church family, please feel free to contact us on the numbers on your screen. We will be glad to assist you to make Faith Church International your home church. And may God bless you.